like the, the, uh, organized, coming back to your original question, uh, eight other ways or principles, what I call essentials, uh, for vitality. Right. So uh, one, um, and uh, by the way, when I started doing the work, I did the work. I right. didn't know the neuroscience yet. Right. And then I started actually reading your research uh, that was published forever. I read it, I don't remember right now, but I remember the research. And I remember just the profound delight and joy I had because I right. thought, oh, they're figuring this out. Right. <laughs> you right. know, I right. know right. it in right. practice, but it right. was very helpful to me because right. then it empowered me to intentionally go more. So doing movement with attention is powerful, but knowing that it's powerful, then we can use it right. better. Right. And we attend, like you said, to our feelings, to our thoughts, to our likes, our dislikes, right. our belief systems. Right. It's all sort of very, very important. So the next one was a, a, what I call the learning switch. And that I really saw both in adults and children. And first I became aware with the, actually the very first child, disabled child that was brought to me. She was two years old with cerebral palsy. And she had hardly any movement. She was very, very spastic. But what most caught my attention, she seemed like dead. She seemed like she was far, far behind her eyes. It was like she has given up. She right. wasn't there. And after the very first session I gave her, all of a sudden it's like the lights turned on behind the eyes. Right. And I realized that when that happens, almost anything I did with her and then consequently with other people right. made a difference. Right. Whereas but before not. Before, it doesn't matter what you do with them, nothing right. happens. Right. That's what I call the learning switch. Right. It's like the brain can be in a learning mode or in a non-learning mode. It's right. like a, a different organization of the whole system, a different right. anticipation of the whole system. It becomes like an information, not just absorbing. My thinking is that the brain actually generates information, gets right. stimulation, but it's either going to turn into information or it's not. Right. Well, I think I think your book does a really nice job of of uh, integrating these sort these sort of empirical principles that have come from your practice, and uh, which you've evolved in a practical way to a high degree through this uh, through, and also with uh, more and more. Strongly integrated with the science, exactly. which is in these, of course, the truth has to has to be one. You know, but <laughs> yes. these two are merging. I think that I think that almost anybody would find your book. That anybody interested in issues of rehabilitation would find your book both informative and inspiring. And there are many really nice examples of uh, of you turning on this switch and <laughs> and of and of mo more than that of defining the optimal conditions or the principles that really help a person or help a person as a therapist to engage a individual in need or in, in trouble, need of help to make real progress. So I strongly encourage people to read this book, to look at this book as a source. Uh, maybe that can contribute to a significant change in their approach to life and their approach to, uh, maybe their approach to the clinical practice of a ther therapist, maybe their approach to their own rehabilitation if they're in need of help. Yeah. The, uh, absolutely, and, and, I, uh, and I'd like to talk with you if there's time for another one or two uh, principles more, uh, because I see them applicable in everyday life too. Right. So, right. So, the, uh, uh, so for instance, and some of them are very counterintuitive. So for instance, one is what I call subtlety, that's reducing the force. I, I, so working with people, I work with uh, athletes and mus uh, high performing musicians, people who really do more than most of us uh, try to even do right. in our life. And, and the attempt usually is to get better by trying harder and more and more right, often, right. longer and oh, oh, oh. Right, And of right, course, right. And you, you know those principles a lot better than right. me. What it does, it drives the existing patterns deeper and deeper, right. and it reduces the it's likelihood. It's a kind of trap, really. Yes, it reduces the likelihood right. of something new to occur right. that will improve the performance. Right. And by reducing the force, the literal force and effort that we do with our muscles, a, we increase the sensitivity, the ability of the brain to perceive differences, which is the basic unit of information right. it can work with. Right. So I've taken sometimes martial artists on very high level or, uh, you know, dancers, uh, principal dancers like once in a Joffrey Ballet, a dancer that couldn't lift her leg above a, one of her legs above a certain height her whole career, and in five minutes I got her to get through it, and just by giving her the opportunity, to feel what it'll take to do it. Right. So it's true for people who do their yoga or take walks or right. make coffee in the morning. Right. Or, right. But it's also true to how you talk to right. your child. People very often try to get their child to do right. something different by using very forceful right. emotional and mental uh, approaches. Right. 
Another one, which I know is uh, something you've built a whole marvelous system for children to help children with, you know, with learning issues, is slow. Right. I mean, very often I found out that all I had to do with a person is right. get them to slow, then a little slower, and then a little slower, and, a little, right. and then they could do it. Right. And then once right. they could do it, they could do it also faster right. and faster right. and faster. And Would you like to speak to that a little bit? Very strong support in the neuroscience literature about this, the brain adjusting its time constants, you could say, and oftentimes it can't operate at its speed, but it can operate as long as the, the sequencing of information is, is, uh, is uh, occurring at a relatively slow rate. And of course, that's the beginning. Performing the behavior appropriately in appropriate sequence control at a slow rate is the beginning of ultimately getting back to a high rate to, to normal performance levels. Exactly. I think that anyone who who, re who reads this book is going to probably discover things about themselves and uh, maybe have a, a breakout or two in their own life. And uh, certainly that possibility will be will arise in in your uh, in your thoughts as you read this book, and it could it have a significant impact on your life going forward. So I strongly recommend that you read it, and uh, for the fun of it, and for your own health and well-being. Move into life. Thank you, Annette. Thank you so much, Dr. Merzenich.